Hi everybody, Dan Edelman, Matt Bernier, the DRF.com. Formulator race of the day for Thursday, October the 5th, race number four at Presque Isle Downs. Let's take a look at the field for the $100,000 Fitz Dixon Jr. Memorial Juvenile Stakes. We're going six and a half furlongs on the tapita surface for two-year-olds. We've got a pretty big field. Yeah, we certainly do. You know, you don't have any standouts in here. I think you got a couple horses most people are going to gravitate toward, but they're far from a slam dunk in this spot. Head on over to the Race of the Day event page on DRF.com. Download your free Formulator Pass performances and handicap along with us as we take this field in post-position order. And one of the morning line favorites is down towards the rail. And number two, Shecky Shebaz adding Lasix for the first time after finishing second at a very short price against several of these horses most recently. Yeah, at first pass, this was the horse that I wanted to land on. And then I went back and watched the replay, and I didn't love it. I wanted to think maybe make the narrative, made the first move, flattened out a little bit and just got run down late. I know the Lasix go on, but I didn't like the fact very late with the lead change. And you just look at the overall way that this race is expected or looks like it could be run. I don't think you can have any easier situation with the pace in this spot. Uh, I think maybe for a minor award. Started off his career with two gate to wire wins. He was forced to sit off of the pace due to the presence of horses like I'm Corfu in there. And he made the lead. He opened up. He probably is supposed to win no matter what the pace scenario is given the price. But as you mentioned, extremely late to change leads and he was run down late. The time form U.S. pace projectors. Well, maybe not so good for the two, Shecky Shabazz, who this time we expect to be out there, but he's going to have to deal perhaps with the 1A Amkor Fu and perhaps the number six, Mr. Benjamin. And that red bar indicates that we expect this pace to be fast, and it might work into the favor of stalkers and closers instead of speed horses like Shecky Shabazz. And that's kind of the way that it looks on paper as well and goes along with the Timeform U.S. pace projector. You can head on over to TimeformUS.com for pace projectors of all North American-based races, Timeform speed figures, Etc. New uh, interesting way to look at past performances, timeformus.com. The three is Kitchen Fire, who benefited from that fast pace last time out to beat six of his common rivals, including Shki Shabazz. And we have a positive formulator fact for his trainer, Ron Potts, over the past three years with two year old last out winners in non graded stakes race synthetic sprints. 33% to 248 ROI. I thought this horse received just a beautiful ride last time out and winning, and he's going to be dangerous right back. Yeah, I think you're looking at a very similar setup as you got last time. You're going to be looking at the highest last out buyer and the highest last out time form U.S. rating if this horse runs anything close to that most recent start. Major contender. Huber Villa Gomez last time out realized the horse to follow was Shecky Shabazz. He followed that one. He altered course down towards the inside, and he finished much better. The one is Fig Jelly, part of a coupled entry. Fig Jelly, sort of an even fifth last time out, going six and a half furlongs in that allowance race behind Kitchen Fire. The buyers, though, are slowly moving forward. Slowly moving forward. Still don't think this one's fast enough. I suppose if you want to say that the other half of the coupled entry is going to be the one that shows the pace, maybe cuts out some fractions, and this one can sit a little bit, but I still don't think he's good enough. 20 to 1 on the morning line for the four stellar trick. It was up close to a solid enough pace last time out, finishing second behind next out winner Crown and Sugar. That horse came back to win a similar 62-5, now winners of two life optional claimer, but only with a 59 buyer. If you think this one can sit a little bit farther off the pace, that may be interesting at a big number. My concern is you're going to be, I think, too close to the pace, which looks like it could be a fast one. One of the intriguing runners in this race <clears throat> is the number five, Gunny Rue, going out for the high percentage trainer Wesley Ward. This horse won around two turns in his career debut on turf and he did so in gate to wire fashion four next out winners including the runner-up a horse that you were very familiar with yeah Archigellos came back and won the gray stakes this past weekend with an 83 buyer I think of the horses coming out of that Delaware race like you say it was a live race you've had four next out winners but more importantly for this horse Gunny Roo out there on the softest of leads on the front end you're not going to get anything close to that this horse is going to need to show that he can sprint and I mean truly sprint, go around one turn, he's going to need to prove that he can run on a synthetic surface and that he can come from off the pace and you get Wesley Ward, there's a part of me that thinks this horse is a major, major underlay. Six to one on the morning line. Ward has done well with these sort of moves in the past. The six is Mr. Benjamin, no match for Kitchen Fire last time out, although he was up close to that pace. And his last two buyer speed figures of 67 and 68, not far out of it, but as the time form U.S. pace projector indicated, he's going to be up close on fast pace again. Yeah, the other problem here with this horse, you have that maiden score two starts back, gate to wire fashion. Every other time he hasn't made the lead, or if he even he has, he's lost ground as the calls have gone on. I don't like him. 
Olds 442, the number seven, won the first two starts of his career, including a stakes race at Presque Isle Downs, two starts back. Now, he had a setup last time out. He was forced to come wide, but I thought he only passed a couple tired horses late. Yeah, I don't think he did enough running in that spot. He projects he had a very similar trip this time around. I don't think he's good enough. How about the eight? Yeah, I know. I know he is only a maiden after one start, but he finished an okay third in that race after breaking slowly from the inside post. And we know the inside can be a very intimidating place for first-time starters. So he didn't break. Yes, he got some pace, but I like the way he rallied in the stretch. 69 buyer speed figure in that race. He can build on that. He's going to get pace again, and he should be a good price. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense in here. Figures to get a good setup in front of him as far as pace is concerned. Uh, never an easy thing to debut against winners already. That's what they tried to do. Uh, he did get some pace, but Guess what? He's probably going to get a similar set setup here. Driven by history, has won three out of his last four starts. The last two races coming around two turns for a 62-5 tag. This is another horse that's going to get a good setup, and he's going to be a good price because he's stepping up in class. Going to need to find out if he's quite as good going one turn. I know he's already won, but it seems like he's really blossomed ever since he's been allowed to go two. <clears throat> that most recent start is very, very interesting. Go back and watch the stretch run. A little bit late with the lead change. I don't know if he hopped a shadow or a track or whatever it was, but he got a little bit weird at the end and almost caught cost in the race. He was much the best in that. Event. I'm Corfu blasted to the top, out sprinted the speedy Sheki Shabazz last time out and paid the price. Two back, no match for 10 City in the Bashford Manor. You can throw that race out. The 65 buyer from three starts back was when he was able to get to a nice easy lead. Not going to get a nice easy lead here. Sky Rider tries a synthetic surface for the first time after winning against Indiana Bread Company, most recently at Indiana Grand. Nice tactical gear, a slow and steady improvement <clears throat> on the buyer scale, but he's got to do more. I'm going to need to move up in a big way, and you have no idea if he's going to be able to handle this surface. Pick time for the when the Thursday formulator race of the day. You're going with Driven by History, who is at 10 to 1 on the morning line for Antonio Gallardo. I just think he's going to get a good setup in here, a lot of pace signed on the turn back. I like. We'll give him a shot. Nine, <laughs> three, two, and five for Matt. Kitchen Fire just beat six of these horses. I think he's going to get a similar setup. I think he's a little bit more professional than Shecky Shabazz. I'll go three, two in the Fix Dixon Memorial Juvenile Stakes. If you are betting the Presque Isle Downs Thursday card from home, two $100,000 stakes races on the card, a $300 sign up bonus is waiting for you when you apply for DRF Bets membership. Head on over to drf.com forward slash fall. Use the promo code fall 300 approximate post time for the fourth the Presque Isle Downs your formulator race of the day for Thursday 640 Eastern best of luck